Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to another Thursday night. As some of you know, I am Tanya. For those of you who don't know, I am Tanya. Hello and welcome to Talking with Tanya. We're just going to call it TWT from now on because I'm not important. The people we're talking to are. Every Thursday night, we have two wonderful people here with me, my delightful co-hosts. Please welcome out Lee Cuthbert and Scoop Dawson. Oh, hey, Tanya. Well, hello, Lee. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Well, hello, Scoop. Hey, Scoop. Hey. So uh, what's been going on with you guys this week? Anything exciting? <laughs> Well, um, I put a little promo for the show on Facebook and my friend Lisa Love responded and she's like, oh, gardening. She's like, you know, the Atlanta rhythm section did a song called, called Doraville back in the 70s. I and that sure, that sure sounds a lot like chlorophyll. chlorophyll. So I wondered if I could start tonight's show with my version of chlorophyll. Well, uh, you absolutely can. But first, I want to tell everybody um, who we're going to be talking to tonight. And then I'm going to let you play your intro song and I will bring them out. All right. Um, we are, uh, because I'm a lady of a certain age, I like the, the book of face. And as I was scrolling through the book of face a couple of weeks ago, uh, something popped up about the North Fulton Master Gardeners and a series of classes that they have. And you know, because it's January and because we're learning new things, we're trying new things, I thought, how cool would it be to talk to not just a gardener, but a master gardener about gardening? Because I would love to say I have a green thumb. I don't, but I believe that we can get there. And they also have a series of classes coming up that anyone can take, anyone can register for, and it's gonna be really, really cool. So before I bring the two guests out, I would love to hear your song about chlorophyll. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm, I was not familiar with, with, with Doraville. It is really quite a lovely homage to a little bit of country in the city. So I had to change just a few lyrics, not a lot. Chlorophyll in the country, in the city. Chlorophyll, it makes plants green and healthy. <coughs> Photosynthesis allows plants to absorb energy from light, but it would be lights out without old chlorophyll. Every night, plants wait for the sunlight. Yeah, that's all right with the chloropast full of chlorophyll. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Ah, very good. Thank you for your song about chlorophyll. And please help me welcome out from the North Fulton Master Gardeners, Donna Weitzel and Sandy Shave. Ladies, please come on out. Hello. Hello. Nice song. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I got some big words in there. Yeah, I love that. That was great. It's hard so to rhyme with chloropast. <laughs> <laughs> but you did it. You made it work. I made it work. So um, I want to start out, and I, uh, I, first of all, I would like it if you guys could sort of explain what a master gardener is. What's a master gardener? We all want to know. We, we can help you with that. Um, I mean, you might think we're a guru about gardening, but really, most of us are plant enthusiasts of one type of plant or another. But... Um, we're actually Master Gardener Extension Volunteers. And so I'll explain what that is because um, it doesn't mean we're all about digging in the dirt. It means we're all about education, actually. And um, we connect the University of Georgia Extension for our county with the people of our county so they can learn about gardening. 
and um, everything we teach is research-based or it's uh, data from the University of Georgia. And their extension, the university extension, is um, kind of our parent uh, organization. So this is their official uh, rendition of who we are. They say that we teach community members how to use plants and gardening to improve their environment, personal health, and quality of life. So that's what master gardeners are. And the extension is actually, um, every state has a master gardener program. It's not just Georgia and it's divided into counties. So there's a county extension agent and um, that person gets the information from the university, which in our case is the Uni University of Georgia. And then uh, our county is Fulton County. So we are North Fulton Master Gardeners and we work for the University of Georgia Extension Office for Fulton County. And um, you know, we, we focus everything on education, educating the people, how to garden, what to know to be successful. And um, we have demonstration gardens that we kind of show how to do things. But it's, it's a great program for people that have time and want to help and want to be part of the community. And um, I, I, I've made a lot of good friends too. So it's a, a great way for anybody who feels like they want to give back and like to, um, you know, learn about plants. There is a training program that goes with it too. I can tell you about that if you're interested. If anybody wants to become a master gardener. Um, yeah. yeah. So I want to ask something else because uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Lee Tenenbaum who talked to me about this and set this up and she said some really cool things. And one of the things she talked to me about was something that the extension service will do for anyone for a nominal fee. I think she said it was $12. And that uh -huh. is test your soil. Can mm -hmm. you kind of go into that a little bit, Sandy, and talk about like what they're looking for, how much soil you have to take them, the ins and outs of that? Yeah, so how much is it has to fit in this little bag. So it's not a whole lot. But what you want to do is go, um, and, it's, and it's best to test, you know, several different different areas of your garden, depending upon what you want to do. Like if there's one area where you want a lawn, you're going to want to take four or five samples of the soil. You're going to want to lift up the current lawn that's there and scoop um, soil from four or five inches below the surface, enough to fill the bag from four or five different locations in the lawn. And then uh, you drop it off at the North Fulton Extension, which is on um, Roswell Road. We can look up that um, information for you. And they send it off to, the, to UGA to be analyzed in their laboratory. And what they test for is pH, phosphate, potassium, calcium, magnesium, mm -hmm. zinc, um, libdenum, and LR. I forget what that is. Um, and you can check a box if you want it extended. But most of all, what you want to do is put in the, in the notes, I'm, this is going to be a lawn. So they'll analyze it. They'll send it back to you. And they'll give you a little report that looks like this. And they'll say, okay, so this was a lawn. You've got your low. In this case, I was low on phosphorus. I was low on potassium. I was good with the calcium, magnesium, and zinc, um, and my pH was way too low. So, and then it will tell you in the notes what you have to do. So it told me I have to add some lime, and how much to add. Um, they, they said I needed to add some 10-10-10 fertilizer, which covers all three major nutrients, the um, uh, phosphate, the potassium, and the nitrogen, um, just as an easy way to do it. Um, so they, and then if you have a separate uh, part of your yard that you want to have a vegetable garden, 
you'll dig from that area, you'll dig four or five examples and you'll fill out another bag and send that in. And they will again send you back a little report on exactly what you need to do to nutrient wise to add for, for, gar for vegetable gardening. And on from there, you can get as specific as you want with your plants. You can say, I'm gonna plant blueberry bushes and they'll send you back exactly what you need to add to the soil to make sure that it's um, ideal uh, for blueberry bushes. So it's a great program. It takes a little bit of effort, but before you start, it's something everyone should do. It is so important. You can spend a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort to plant a garden and have it fail because you didn't have the basic nutrients that you needed. So that is very, very important. I'm so glad you asked about that. Yeah, Scoot, do you have a question? I have two questions. Uh-oh. So, basically what you're saying is that <clears throat> as far as like grow, growing certain things, you have to have Everyone certain, do. It you so have to have certain uh, like certain, uh, like zinc, you have to have zinc to help grow a certain, a certain type of plant. Yeah. Right. So some, some plants like certain nutrients more than others. Some plants like a high pH, some plants like a low, lower pH, like azaleas and camellias, like a lower pH. Other plants want a higher pH. Donna, did you want to add something? Well, that's what I was going to say. Depending on what you're growing, you know, that particular plant might want something in the soil that other plants don't want. So don't need. Yeah, or don't need. So that's kind of where that that is. The soil needs to be it's the place where the plant takes up all the nutrients to grow. I mean, you get the water, you get the sun, and then the soil is really important. So that just helps you be successful if you get the right stuff in the soil. And it's not just the nutrients. Um, once you get the nutrient analysis, you also need to prepare your soil by adding organic material to it. A lot of, most of our soil, well, and if you live in the metro area, you probably have to dig out the bricks and the rocks and the, and the construction debris that they left, you know, in the ground near your homes. Um, so you really have to spade the whole thing you, or till it if you got a rototiller. Add, I don't remember the exact amount, but I think it has to be at least 5% organic matter. And by that, I mean adding leaves, adding... You can, you can buy compost at any of the big box stores or Pikes or um, your local, whatever your garden center is, because you have to get that organic matter into the soil. And of course, you're going to want to add uh, possibly some cow manure or other things that will replenish the soil if it hasn't been conditioned well before. Not yeah, you, want your, you want your soil to be to be fluffy and workable and also alive. And if you add compost, you're putting live things in there and the plants really love that. And it helps them grow well and makes your soil um, a living thing versus this dead stuff that looks like, you know, red, red clay. iron clay or something. So that's important for a garden. I'm going to come to you, Scoop, but is that why it's so important? Because I noticed, Sandy, when you were talking, you referenced organic and kind of put some emphasis on organic. Yeah, is that absolutely. why it's so important that it be organic, that it needs to be living to really feed that soil? That, yes, that's part of it, that the living organisms and, and, you know, we don't think of that and we don't realize mm. that, but you really need worms and bacteria and mycorrhizae. Uh, all, all uh, which is a fung form of fungus. You need all that stuff in your soil as it helps the roots to absorb the nutrients out of out of the organic material and the fertilizers that you're putting uh, into the soil. And of course, we're not advocating store bought fertilizer. It's often easy, um, but you can add um, the lorganite, um, you know, hen poo. Um, um, uh, I always buy black cow and mix it in with my soils. Um, but the other thing it does is it lightens the Georgia clay. 
if you if you just put seeds or plants in plain Georgia clay without breaking up all of that aggregate soil, the, the minute it dries out or it gets hot, it turns into a brick. Mm -hmm. So you really need to loosen up that soil and you, you do that by adding all of that organic matter. And you need to replenish that every year because your, your plants will use that organic uh, material. I love that. Yes, Scoop, you had something. Uh, I have, uh, this is another like two part question. I didn't get to my second part the last time, but okay. Say, okay. My mom's middle name is Azalea. Oh, uh, we love it. Like what, like what would I need to do to grow azaleas? And also what would I need to do to grow roses? So that I wanted to keep uh, wearing roses for, uh, Donna, for you want to take that? I've, I've been talking well, to um, your mom's name is beautiful. And you know, I met a little girl um, a couple years ago named Azalea and I thought, oh, I wish I had named my daughter Azalea. But anyway, uh, if you want to grow um, azaleas, you know, there are native azaleas to Georgia and they actually live in the wild and they're fantastic plants and they love a little bit of shade. You know, they don't want to sit there in the full sun. So that's the first thing, you know, make sure when you put your azalea in the ground, there's a little bit of shade or dappled sunlight coming through. Um, they like a little acid soil. So we were talking about pH a few minutes ago. Well, the acid, there's acid and alkaline, and it wants to be more on the acid side. So there are things you can put in your soil, depending on your soil sample, to make it just right for those azaleas. Um, Azaleas, there are so many kinds. There are the kind that get as big as a tree, and then there are the small little uh, dwarf ones, they call them. And, the, and there are actually azaleas that bloom in the summer, um, and, but most of them bloom in the spring. So what you need to do is kind of go to the garden center or get a catalog or something and look at those azaleas that are there and say, hmm, you know, what do I want? What color do I want? What size? Where am I going to put this thing? And then you get that soil ready so that it's the correct pH for your um, azaleas or azalea, if you just want one. And um, it will bloom for you here. It loves it in Georgia. Azaleas are meant for this place. It's, it, it'll be real successful for you. So I'm excited you're going to put an azalea in. Roses are a little different though. Mm -hmm. And I could go on and on like for 20 minutes about roses, but <laughs> there are so many kinds of roses. Um, there's one, the closer you get to the native uh, rose that's, that's grows in the wild, the more successful you'll be. And there's one that um, they've just kind of developed and it's, it's sort of like a bush rose you know there were knockout roses but there's one that's replaced it and what's it called sandy uh drift roses drift roses they're, yeah, they're real easy good. to grow you don't have to do anything to them you don't have to prune them and uh they need full sun though yeah. now as opposed to your azalea that needs a little bit of shade roses need sun they just want to be out there baking in the sun and and so that's where you have to look where you're going to put it because you don't want to give it shade. It won't like that. So I would suggest drift roses if you're a new rose grower. And then you'll get them all summer long. As soon as they start to bloom, they'll just keep blooming. And they're just beautiful. And lots of flowers on each um, shrub. Oh, I love that you said that they were. Yeah, uh, too. Yeah, I love that you said that they were easy to grow. You were speaking easy. my language. Yes, Lee, did you have something? Yeah, I had a couple things. Scoop, do you just want to grow roses so you don't have to buy them at the store? Is this like a budgetary decision for you, for your lady friend? This is very budgetary. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I thought so. I feel, like just you like I feel like the sentimental value should have, should have more of me going after the cup than myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have, you can have plants, uh, you can have flowering flowers almost year round if you yeah. want. Get the right plants all lined up. You can have cut flowers year round for your girlfriend. 
I find have, out find yeah. out her favorite color and then plant that whatever I, it is. Yeah. I have a question that has to do with color and soil. I'm going to ask you guys about hydrangea plants. Oh yeah. Because I have heard that the color of the plant depends on what is in the soil. Okay. Can you kind of yeah. Talk us through that a little bit. I can, I can take that one if you want to. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's a couple of different kinds of hydrangeas. The most common kind of hydrangeas is the macrophilia or the, the, the ball. You know, we see the big ball. Um, and the, the like endless summer variety and some of the ones that have been around for a while, you can change the color of that with the pH. Um, the more lime you add, the more pink it gets, the more acid you add, the more blue or violet it becomes. But a lot of the varieties that are out there today just come in a color, and you can't really change it by changing the pH. Um, but some of them you can. Um, then the other, more po the other also popular variety of hydrangeas, the paniculatas, they're kind of conical shape. Um, and you see some of them that are, you know, pink at the base and then white at the ends. They call those strawberry something or other. Um, and they, um, they, they typically do not change with the soil pH. But I have some of the more traditional macrophilia on the side of my house. And just for fun, I started throwing lime. They always came out kind of bluish purple. I, think, I, started, I started throwing lime on a couple of them on the end. There's like six of them in a row. And sure enough, they started to turn pink this last year. And, um, so now I have a funny looking row of hydrangeas because some are pink and some are, <laughs> some are blue. Um, yes, Lee, did you have something? We, we have a Twitch um, question. Do you guys, um, your master gardeners, do you go do home consultations or is it just people coming to your classes? We typically um, don't go to people's homes, but they can call the extension office and ask any question and a master gardener or an extension agent will answer the question. Um, and they can come to our classes, but okay. um, I don't know that anybody's done a home consultation. That's, that's a new one for me. What about you, Sandra? Well, I, I know of some, but it becomes a real tricky, a tricky situation um, where all of a sudden people want you to design their landscaping for them and we're really not, you know, qualified for that. Um, we might be able to troubleshoot or, or help in certain, give suggestions, but we're not, we're not landscape designers. Um, uh, so we kind of steer away from that, but, but <clears throat> since you mentioned classes, um, one of our goals with this new way that we're doing classes, which is Zoom, recording them, um, and this fall we want to do live Zoom webinars, record them also, and then they all go on YouTube. Um, as you mentioned, Lee Tannenbaum, I also want to give a shout out to her because she dove head first into this whole thing when, when our traditional classes shut down which broke our hearts because we were in the middle of the spring season and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And then we all kind of sat around paralyzed for a month while everybody freaked out about the pandemic. And um, Lee dove into the Zoom stuff, figured out how to do the recording. She also set up our YouTube channel. So you can go to YouTube and just type in North Fulton Master Gardeners and you'll see the tree. You've seen our logo, which is the tree. You click on that and it'll take you to about 40 videos that we've done over the course of the last 10 months, nine months, if you will, um, um, on a whole host of topics from summer on the basics, soil preparation, soil testing, composting, using worms for composting. Others, there's one whole one on hydrangeas. It's a wonderful presentation. Um, there's, um, uh, you know, fragrant gardening, shade gardening. Um, Donna did one on making a uh, bulb lasagna. Yeah. Uh, Robin Pollock is another lady I want to shout out to. She, she kind of 
very quickly in this whole thing, got one of her friends to cell phone video her over at Farm Chastain while she's planting stuff in the Farm Chastain gardens, and they put it up on Farm Chastain. And the rest of us said, we can do that. So we quickly migrated over to using that, that series. But we also have lawn care, um, spring and fall vegetable gardening, growing orchids, uh, winter interest plants. Um, Kathy Lunsford um, does this great presentation on um, making um, worm compost, where you keep worms, you know, in your house or in your basement, and you feed them your table scraps, and they made this wonderful soil that is like the best fertilizer, and it's all natural. And you're not filling up the, um, the, uh, the landfills with leftover um, vegetable scraps. Uh, in peelings and, and coffee grounds and tea bags and stuff like that, um, you're actually using it to make this wonderful soil that you then uh, put in your garden. So there's a lot of great gardening information already on our YouTube channel. And then we have our spring gardening series that I can talk about in a minute if you want, because yes. we'll be starting that on February 2nd. I want you guys to talk about that, but... Um... First, I want to say that I feel like uh, gardening to a lot of people might be a little intimidating mm -hmm. because you want to have mm -hmm. success at it, but people don't really know how to go about doing it. So if you guys wouldn't mind sort of telling us how you got started in it, how you got into it, and then I want to go into the classes because... I feel like, you know, the ways that you guys are describing it and the resources that are out there that most people don't even know about, like the extension service, mm -hmm. it, it seems yeah. like that people could easily have success with it. There are, are ways to do that. I think a lot of people, myself included, I'm speaking for myself, are terrified to actually take the plunge because it's expensive to go buy these plants and a month later, kill them all. I yeah. have experience with this, but yeah, if you guys <laughs> kind of tell us how you guys got started in it, and then I want you to take us through the class program and I'm going to share it on my screen, but tell us how you guys got started gardening. Well, I, I had a grandmother who, and she lived in Michigan and she knew the name of every plant, Latin name. She grew cactuses in the house and great stuff outside. And she had a shed with these pots that were all stacked up different sizes and tools. And I was fascinated, you know. And so then as I, when I got older, I became a military spouse and we moved all the time. 11 times we've moved anyway. <laughs> But here I am in Atlanta, and um, before I got here, I became a master gardener in Florida, and then we moved to Nebraska. So I became a master gardener in Nebraska, and now I am in Atlanta, the best place to grow stuff. It's a wonderful zone. Um, so all along the way, I tried to grow things, like we lived in uh, Stone Mountain uh, in the 80s, and I put my seeds in the ground, for hollyhocks and they are a two-year plant. First year they just get leaves, the second year they get their flowers and here come the moving vans and I'm like, we can't leave until these flowers bloom, you know, <laughs> because I was waiting for two years. And, uh, you know, so you, it's a journey actually. I mean, you don't go from, I don't garden to some lush, beautiful, you know, perennial garden it's a learning experience and I'm still learning I would start with pots you know get a container put some good container mix or potting soil find a plant you think is beautiful and put it in or a tomato or an azalea right or even a rose and then take care of that thing and talk to it and baby it and give it what it needs and it will be gorgeous for you and you will feel so successful because you grew that thing and maybe it had some bad days and you brought it back and it means that you are a gardener because you grew this tomato or this azalea or this rose 
and then you know okay i'm going to try this next thing if you want to do the big um tilling up the soil and having a great big vegetable garden you know start in a way that is going to give you success you know don't try to do the lower 40 you know just do a little patch in your yard um but everybody has their own thing that they are good at and that they love. And my advice would be, um, as Sandy was talking about the soil, get the soil right, find the plant you love and give it what it needs. You can do a little research, go to the University of Georgia. Um, we have publications through the uh, extension office and it's, it's not that hard. You know, and if you kill it, you kill it and you start over, you know, but, but you have to try, you have to give it a try. And I bet you can do it and you're going to love it. And then you're going to want to do more. So that's what I think. Anyway, Sandy's got a different journey, I think, to her yeah. gardening. Scoop, did you have a question for Donna about her journey? It, it's kind of almost like trying to raise a child. Like it is. As you, as, you, as you nurture, I don't have kids. I was going to say, you don't have experience with that. You pipe down. <laughs> but it, it sounds like this type of thing to where, like, if you nurture it, like, it will grow. Like, it will grow into what you want it to grow into. Like, as long as you nurture and mature, like, as long as you nurture your child, they will grow to how you want them to grow. Like, you still have to let them go go along the paths. You still have the bumps and you still have the bumps and paths but you still have to let it mature. You still have to let it mature on its own. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's she, really, the very most important thing she said was, first you get your soil right. Oh yeah. So you my, gotta get your soil right. Yeah, and then right. you can get to planting. Yeah. Well, well I, and, and you could get soil right. Also, if you're doing pots, you know, you can get really good soil from a, a garden center or something like that if you want to start there. But if you want to put it in the ground, put a little compost or get that soil ready and your plant will be happy. Yeah. Well, I but, think but that I nurturing, think, that sorry. nurturing part is that nurturing part is so important because, you know, particularly like if it's in a pot on your patio in the summer in the bright sun, you better be watering that thing every day. So if you're not, mm -hmm. you know, you can't just plant, plant it and ignore it. No. That's so right. that, I think what you said that was super important, what I took from it is that gardening is something that you can do anywhere because you took us through your moves. You went yes. to Florida, you went to Nebraska, and now you're here and, and you picked it up and did it yeah. everywhere. Well, and I just realized I was thinking about this question and I thought I have, I, there are zones in the United States where each zone has a temperature range and you know, soil is different. And I have gardened in zone five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Tropical to Nebraska, which is the worst. Sorry if somebody's from Nebraska, but it was really hard. <laughs> so you could be successful and there are challenges with each one. And as you go along, you're gonna learn, oh yeah, that didn't work. I have to try that something different next time but but yeah so scoop you um you're right it's like raising a child but mother nature is really in charge and and you're just along for the ride trying to you know trying to baby it along but yeah you can do it you can do it so uh sandy what's your kind of story um, well, I grew up in, in northern Wisconsin on a large dairy farm uh, with six brothers and sisters. And uh, if you know anything about dairy farming, they don't make a lot of money. So we always had a huge vegetable garden. It was probably 50 feet wide by 100 feet long, and I'm not kidding. We had every vegetable you can think of. Now, the soil in Wisconsin is fairly easy to grow. I mean, my father would spread some cow manure on it and till it in and, and we'd plant and you'd get these wonderful plants and he didn't have to worry about the soil a whole lot because it, it was, you know, um, it had the right tilth to the soil um, to begin with. Um, but when I moved to, um, and, and, and even as I grew, so I grew up always gardening with my mother and we would grow all these vegetables, we'd can them, we'd freeze them, we'd, 
we have a root cellar and we eat off the food that we grew in our garden for months and months. Um, and even as I went away and got my own home, I always had a garden. It was just kind of part of my heart and soul that I, I needed to have a garden. And I, I was always working, so I, I never had a fancy garden, nothing like what my mother had. But I certainly, I always grew tomatoes because I loved them. I like, you know, be, green beans and peas, you know, fresh peas in the spring are so delicious. And um, asparagus, asparagus grows so easily up north and, and, you know, it propagates itself and you, you know, pretty soon you're eating asparagus from, from April through um, June. Um, but down here, I moved down here about six years ago and I, I, you know, I'd heard about the soil and I knew it was different and I knew I had to understand that and I knew I had to learn a whole new way of gardening. And so that, that's actually how I got hooked up with the, the Master Gardeners is I started going to the community classes and attending, you know, like the composting and the good soil and, you know, vegetable, how do you get started with some of the vegetable gardening here. And, um, you know, but like Donna, I've done a lot of trial and error and a lot, some, you know, some of the vegetables are the same, some of them are different. Some of them you have to grow differently here than you did up north. It might be the same vegetable. Um, your planting seasons are different and, and of course watering and all of that stuff. You really, you know, have to make sure it's not washing away in our deluge Delusions of rainstorms, well, but then well. you also have to make sure it's watered. Um, and my yard is very challenging here because it's small. Um, I have a very small yard and it's very shaded. So I'm kind of limited in terms of what I can grow, but I still grow tomatoes every year. I, I have tried to grow tomatoes and they don't survive the small wildlife in my yard, but uh, I want to, um, oh, look, we have a question from each of you. Scoop, your hand was up first. Yeah, I was going to tell you, Tanya, if my dad can grow tomatoes, you can grow tomatoes. Oh, <laughs> thank you for that vote of confidence, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He just retired and he has a whole little tomato go. I don't know how good they taste. I don't eat tomatoes, but. You're from Mississippi and you don't eat tomatoes? No, I don't. But I guess that, that's a follow-up to my next question I was going to ask for y'all. How do y'all feel about magnolia trees? Oh, oh well, they're, they're beautiful trees. They're everywhere. They're, they grow wild here. You know, they're, they're not natives, I don't think. Are they, Sandy? I think they are. I think they are. Uh, some, yeah, I think uh, some. Uh, I think some of some varieties of the maple. Some varieties are natives, but they, they, yeah. There's a lot of different ones that you can grow. If you're thinking of um, the the great big eighty foot ones that get the great big flowers on them, they grow really easily here, and they're reliable and they're evergreen. You know, the leaves never fall off, and uh, we've got a lot of them around here. And I have one in my yard. Um, that is not the big kind that I'm talking about with the evergreen leaves, but you know, there's a lot of varieties that are beautiful and it's kind of an old south plant, you know? I mean, when you come down here from the north and you see these magnolias, you don't have them up there. So it, it really is a signature southern plant. I, I think it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I'm I'm from Mississippi, and my dad he had one uh, in the middle of his yard. So I always like look at those and just like look at how everything yeah. grows and like how beautiful everything is. Yeah, I know. We've got great plants. Another one that I would recommend to people is a camellia, and they get flowers. Well, there's two kinds. One gets flowers November, December, January, and the other one is like. February, March time frame. So you can have flowers in the winter on these easy to grow uh, shrubs and the, it's evergreen, you know, they have nice shiny small leaves on them and um, they're just beautiful. They sort of look like roses. So that might be something scoop you could try as a, as a camellia, yeah. I haven't killed the camellia in my yard yet. Lee, okay. you have something? <laughs> I did, yeah. I want to really get down to brass tacks here, if you don't mind. You look like very nice people, but <laughs> I I feel Looks like under, 
some <laughs> under the surface stuff that we've got to get to. First of all, at our theater, we have apprentice cast members and we have main cast members. Are there a bunch of underlings dying to be master gardeners and you keep them down because you're worried about their quality or you don't want the competition? Like, is there a subset? Oh, listen, you, you gotta go through 42 hours of training. You have to be accepted. There's a background check. Um, you have to take these take classes and there's an exam. So it's not easy. So we get the cream of the crop, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me ask you guys this, because I want to share my screen. Is the starting point to becoming a master gardener, just sort of taking the plunge and taking some classes? And yeah. Sandy, uh, I want you, I'm going to share my screen. Well, to become a master gardener, there's a very formal program that, that Donna mentioned earlier. But we supplement the, um, for, for people who might not want to be a master gardener, although master gardeners can t attend as well, we have these for the community. So they're sort of our adult education, um, you know, gardening lecture series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you kind of take us through this? Because I know you guys are starting on February 2nd and you're starting with spring vegetable gardening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might sound early, but guess what? You can start planting your garden in February. So February is not too early to be having this presentation. Things like beets and some of your you know, spinach and lettuces can be planted very early. So we are very fortunate in that the, the lineup of people who are doing presentations for us, both last year and this year, are very seasoned gardeners. I've only been a master gardener for two years. So, you know, I don't put myself on here because I don't consider myself to be, a, you know, an absolute expert at Southern gardening yet. Um, but these people are. So we've got the spring vegetable gardening, um, growing, and, and we already have over 500 people signed up, registered on the spring vegetable gardening class. Um, wow. Growing lavender, there's 574 people signed up for. What's the allure of lavender? What's, what's the allure? I think it's oh. the, the, the sachet, the, 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 the smell, the, the, the wonder of the aromatherapy that you can do with lavender and its, and its history throughout time. Of, of being such a soothing um, uh, herb, if you will. Yeah, it, it can be a medicinal plant or an aromatherapy plant, or you can use it actually for culinary purposes. It's real versatile and beautiful too. And then uh, the class on trees. Um, a lot of people are can, you know, need to really need to be reminded the proper way to plant a tree, to select a tree for the location that you're going to put it in, and how to locate it. Um, so that's a very good class um, by Tom Redman. Um, hostas. Um, everybody loves hostas, and no garden would be right without one. Um, lawn care for spring and summer. John Clagora does a fabulous job um, detailing um, growing the uh, cool weather um, uh, grass as well as the warm weather gr grasses. Big Trees of Sandy Springs. That's um, Big Trees is a, um, an, a, a, a it's not a I guess preserve. It's, a it's a preserve. Thank you. In, in Sandy Springs, that has all this history and beautiful hiking trails in it. Um, and we have a team of master gardeners who help uh, to maintain that area. Um, establishing and growing perennials, our very famous Donna Weitzel is going to be doing that presentation. Um, hopefully we'll contain her hollyhocks that she's, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she loves so much. Um, attracting wildlife and detracting critters. Um, we all have, as Jonna mentioned earlier, the deer that love to, you know, think her garden is their personal salad bar. Um, a course on native plants, which natives are so important for the butterflies and for maintaining some of the wildlife, uh, the insect population that we need to maintain. Um, and then the spring planting demonstration. 
Um, so this is really would be, you know, a great class for beginners on exactly how to, you know, prepare the soil, dig the hole, put it, the plant in, really very remedial class. And all of these classes, you can, be, you can register for them on the nfmg.net website. That's our North Fulton Master Gardener website. And on the left-hand side, you click on community classes. And it gives a greater um, class description and a link to register. And we, um, we hope to see you in some of our, uh, our classes. So um, what is, is there a charge for these classes? No, no, thank no, you, Rossi. No. These are all free. And um, we, the, um, I know a lot of people register and then, you know, maybe half of them don't even show up. So don't worry about getting kicked out of the class. Our webinar will take up to 500 people, but if it's full when you log in, it will direct you to our Facebook channel, which is North Fulton Master Gardeners Facebook, and it will be live streaming on Facebook as well. And then when we're done, all of this gets posted on YouTube and Facebook where you can watch it at your leisure anytime. Right. So all of these are free for the community. Yes. Great. As part of our charter is to bring free education to the community. Yeah, that is awesome. So everybody go to www.nfmg.net. Yes. The classes are listed on the left-hand side. They are free, y'all. We all love a freebie. They are free. Sign up for a class. Yes, Scoop, I expect you to be in a class. Yeah, I was about to say, people like free, you know, free, free, you might as well, free, 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 free. Free, well. they're free classes, free classes. Yes, Lee. Who said that first. I feel like this is just an open door, though, for graft and corruption. So it's free, <laughs> but really, aren't you being approached all the time by, like, pikes and other places? And, 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 and are you on the take? Like, if you recommend pikes, do you get, like, $20 a week or... Like really, where's the dirt here? This is too good to be true. We're, no, we're, we're uncorruptible. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe it. This is a labor of love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this has been really, really great. I would love to have you ladies back in March to talk about the spring planting. The class yeah. you have on April 18th to really kind of go over it because Scoop will be taking that class. <laughs> and then in, yeah, you heard me. And then in June, we will see the fruits of his labor uh -huh. live on Very Sunday. Good. Yes, Very yes, good. Scoop. Right. <laughs> Why can't we all just take the class and just see who has the best plan? Oh, we can. I'm, I'm game. If you are throwing down a challenge, I am game. Oh, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I would love to have you ladies back in March to sort of talk about what all is going on on your YouTube channel. Um, okay. What's coming up, the three of us will be in your April 18th class. Um, we'll meet <laughs> until June, and we will let you ladies, if you are down for it, be the judge of <laughs> what we have grown. Oh, I love it. I love it. Awesome. Oh, yeah. We'll have a... A little garden challenge there. That'll be fantastic. Scoop, Very good. I'm guessing you it. have a challenge already between South Fulton and Central Fulton. I bet <laughs> you guys are just tearing each other up, aren't you? You guys are just like neck and neck, looking at each other's plants like, uh-uh, no way. <laughs> well, um, ladies, this has been great. Guys out there, if you're looking for something new to do, check out the North Fulton Master Gardeners, nfmg.net. These classes are free. I can't stress that enough. If you've been interested in gardening, get on there, take these classes. Uh, we're gonna have them back to talk some more uh, in about six weeks or so, and then we will all be taking the class on oh. April 18th. So um, thank you guys so cool. much. Thank you. We'll see you all back here next Thursday. Thank Bye you. everybody. <laughs>